In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this. If you've been programming for a while, chances are that you've needed at some point to execute a function a fixed number of times per second. I'm going to be showing you one of the many ways to do this. To better understand our code, let's first set up a context to aid our thinking process. Imagine you're working on a video game and you've been tasked with setting up a system that will allow programmers on the team to send a consistent stream of messages to a server. What can we pull away from this? Well, we know that we need a consistent stream of messages, so we would most likely need to have a variable controlling how many times per second the stream is fired. We can call that updates per second. We also know that we need a way to update the script with the time that's passed, and we will call this method update. It will take in an action we want to perform when we tick, and the time that's passed since last program iteration. I've gone ahead and made a new Visual Studio project, which we will be using to write our fixed loop system. The first thing we need to do is create a new script called fixed loop. This will be handling most of the functionality for our system. Now that we're inside the script, we need to reflect on what we know. We need a variable called updates per second, and when working with timers, we want to be as precise as possible, so we're going to make this a double instead of a float. This variable will also not change throughout the program, so we're going to be giving it the const tag. So if we assign this variable a value of 32, we need to somehow translate this to real world seconds. So we would create a new variable called fixed delta, which will be equal to 1 divided by our updates per second. This will also be a const. We're also going to need a way to keep track of our time, so we'll be making a private double called accumulator. Finally, we will make our public void called update, which will take in our action to evoke that we discussed earlier and the time that's passed. Inside of this method, we need to apply our time that's passed to the accumulator, which will allow us to check whether or not we need to tick. In order to check this, we need to say while accumulator is greater than or equal to fixed delta, or in other words, while the time we've accumulated is greater than the time we needed to update, then we would want to invoke our action and subtract the fixed delta from our accumulator. Let's say in one frame our delta passed a value of 2 seconds, our accumulator would have to run a few times during this frame in order to catch up. That's actually all we need to do, and we can go back into program.cs to check it out. Inside of our program, we need to first add a reference to our fixed loop. We will also be assigning the loop an instance inside of main. We will be keeping this program running till forcibly closed, so we will say while true. Inside of this, we want to say fixedloop.update, and we need to pass in a method for it to call. We will be creating a private static void called tick, which will simply print the word tick to console. Let's go ahead and add it to our .update parameter, and we also need a way to track how much time has passed since last program iteration. We will be using a simple date time implementation for this. Create a variable called last iteration time, and we will set this equal to datetime.utc.now. Then we need to pass in datetime.utc now and subtract that from last iteration time. Finally, we want to grab the total seconds from that. This will give us the time since last program iteration. Then we want to set our last iteration time to datetime.utc now. Finally, due to the precision of date time, we need to throttle the program to ensure that it can accumulate enough delta. We will do this via the line system.threading.thread.sleep. And that's actually all. If we hit F5, we can see that it's calling our code the number of times we specified in the fixed loop program. If we sign a value of 32, you will see that it will run 32 times per second. 